Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on scientific programming using Python. Now, the last tutorial we saw how to make, uh, how to do a lot of documentations, some basic documentations using Python and uh, how to make a presentation out of it so that you guys can have a look. Okay, now this is actually some of the uh, concluding parts of, we are in the concluding parts of this uh, works in this uh, tutorial series. Now, this will be like, uh, where do you stand option, okay, okay, this is more of a, a takeaway notes part of it, I'll explain what's, what's, what to be done here, okay, now, uh, where do you stand, now if you guys have followed all this tutorial series, and uh, if you have mastered everything what, what, I, what has been taught over this entire, 30, uh, 30, close to 30 something videos, okay, uh, you will be, uh, you will have a reasonable set of programming skills to tackle research, first of all. And also you will have a reasonable amount of research skills uh, related to programming that you can implement directly uh, directly to your job. Okay. And also you have a tool that for, for documenting your stuff, work with thing, working it and with work to work with and also to experiment with. And you also have a tool with which you can, you know, learn something. Uh, la I mean implement something whatever you learn quickly okay and if these are the tools you have and this is if this are, are these necessary are these uh, self-sufficient enough to be honest no it not it's not self-sufficient meaning uh, depending on the work depending on where you work and everything you may have to learn other operations for instance people in atmospheric and oceanic sciences Okay, they also learn a little bit of shell programming, how to operate in uh, Linux or Unix systems. They learn a little bit of pro LaTeX, other programming languages and stuff to uh, ensure their needs. If you are following, if you are in some other research domain, you may have to learn some of these or you may have to learn an entirely different set of, set of these. Okay, and one more thing is that, one more thing is that, okay uh, your python programming skills whatever you learn will have will give you a very quick kick start to jump into your research directly and then based on the demands and requirements of your research you may have to learn a little bit of more programming or a little bit of more codes and everything so that you get uh, you get a, you get a lot of jobs done in that in that regard okay okay so these are actually uh, if you understood all this you have a very good solid foundation of uh, python for scientific purposes and you can implement the whatever you learned in your research directly okay and then some important links okay not too many okay there is this course of course called as uh, high performance computing it is delivered by a very f uh, delivered by a professor named Ra randy randall j levick of University of Washington, the Department of Applied Mathematics. Okay, he's a professor in that department, and he delivers a course of scientific programming in Python. Uh, sci scientific, uh, sci uh, high performance, sorry, high performance computing. It's available in Coursera, and it's a free course. Okay, here this is a very, free, uh, very f famous course. Okay, okay, wherein he teaches a little bit of Fortran, Git, Bitbucket, Python, OpenMP, and MPI implementation, and other little bit of our advanced mathematical programming concepts in this story in the series and that will be very very useful for many people and if you guys are i mean he'll be talking this in a general scientific computation point of view but this will be very useful for anybody who will work, want to develop uh, so a reasonable amount of null uh, skills with regarding to scientific computing and uh, high performance computing okay i recommend you guys do this and other than that uh, if you just guys check in the internet for uh, links relevant to scipy numpy matplotlib vakari simpy stack and uh, and if you look at stack exchange pages conda and thought and everything if you like if you look at these uh, pages link uh, pages uh, regarding these things you'll get to know a very like, you'll get to access a large number of uh, documentation and worked examples on how to do a lot of job uh, uh, when you have any queries and doubts in python those jobs can be done very nicely you just there will be a lot of links about it for instance if you want to tell, know something about matplotlib just i just have to type matplotlib okay it will take me to website called to the website matplotlib.org and if i press enter this is the web this is the web page that this is how the web page looks like based as on september 9 okay you have a very you have a this is the introduction page and if you go to examples let's say you will have 
uh, you will have a ton of ton of examples like what well, well, that covers literally everything literally literally everything so for example if i want to do uh, let's say image contours and field examples and i just click one interpolation method let's say like like this okay click this you have an image like this you'll have image like this and uh, they give you the code at the give you the code as well as to how to uh, get uh, do the interpolation like this they'll show you a code tell you what, to, what how it is done they'll give you explanations in the comments and they'll r r give you the sample code and what uh, one thing is you can download the source code the images and the comp consolidated images and everything okay if i were to click this pdf if i were to click this pdf it'll take me to the image page where the image is in pdf okay and if i were to click this uh, image you'll also get the image available what they done you can have a look at that okay on the other hand okay let's say i don't want this image I just want the source code click the source code and it'll download and your system if, if you go to a download section you can you have the codes ready and uh, if you want like this this is the same code available you can just what you can just do is just copy all this just copy all this and uh, for instance let me open my genie okay an editor okay and then what i want if if what you can do is that if i just uh, copy all this content uh paste it over here save it save it using you know sample plot lib dot py presenter okay just ask me to uh, show a folder right so let me just give it to my uh main folder main folder save it okay the code is ready now if i were to uh, compile this and build it execute this okay okay oh well it just shows that matplotlib.pyplot is not available not a big deal not a big deal okay i think it's using the system python option over here but the thing is you can get this job done and uh, to explain that a little easily what i do is that i just open my terminal i just open my new tab activate spider sorry not spider py27env that's my environment name now spider it should come in a come in a minute I should come in a minute. Um, why is it taking this time? Okay, it's in all files. Let me close this. Let me close this up. Let me close this up. Let me go to my main folder. Uh, my main folder over here. And if I go to my file explorer. Uh, Uh, not this. I, I don't want this any. I don't want this. Uh, it's over here. So if I go to my file here, where is that? Sample matplotlib.py. I click this. It's available. Okay. Now what I do is that if I just run this file, there you have it. The image comes nicely. Nicely. So this way. You have some options wherein you can get a lot. You have an options over here that you can do a lot of. Then you have a lot of documentation work examples that you can use it to um, fit your need. Other than that, you have other options like Cython. Okay, yeah, you, you have an option called a Cython that is available. Like, why is it? Why that is necessary and how it is used and everything? I'll explain this this to you guys in the next tutorial. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.